Hey all you Simonites, it's Simon Simon, owner and broker of the Simon Simon Group Real Estate right here in beautiful, sunny Central Florida. The weather's absolutely amazing. It's a new year. Happy New Year to all you Simonites out there, 2024. And what better way to kick off the year with a meaningful video. You know, in real estate, we sell about 120 homes a year for the past 12, 13 years. And we're blessed to have amazing clients that we become friends with and really like family. And every once in a while, we come across some great ones. In particular, I sold uh, this gentleman's home right behind me on Lake Bessie in downtown Windermere uh, about two years ago. And uh, his name was Alan Corney. And uh, I learned so much from him. And I wanna share something meaningful uh, with my fans so they can kind of take that message and hopefully implement it in your life because uh, I think Alan, um, being almost 94 years old when he passed, he led a great life, a meaningful life, and I really wanted to share that story with all you guys. So without further ado, uh, let me tell you what happened with uh, Alan and I and how we first met. So about a year and a half ago in uh, 2022, his, one of his daughters contacted me that uh, her father uh, around 94 years old was uh, interested in possibly selling his house um, because his wife passed prior to that and uh, they wanted him to just be more comfortable be like in a nursing home so they can have care and I said absolutely I'm more than happy to help um, I met the gentleman he was so polite and one thing I noticed when I walked in the door was all the family photos around the whole entire home and he was so proud to show me uh, where he worked, well, what he did in life, his family, um, all the memories he had. Um, and he showed me how him and his wife designed this home on the lake and how they really wanted to maximize the views of the lake. And they had a column, so they decided to go with a structural beam to hold the, the weight so they have no uh, unobstructed views of the lake. I mean, all these things he got into detail. He was actually an engineer and uh, really, you know, explained to me everything, what he loved about the home. And I can see his passion of how much he loved this home and all the memories that him and his family created in it. And I asked him, I said, Alan, I said, so why are you selling your home? And he said, well, Simon, um, I'm selling my home because I don't want my family to worry about me. And uh, right then and there, you know, I really felt something for this man, how caring he is, um, how selfless he is, uh, how he, he loves his family so much that he doesn't want them to worry about him when he's home alone, even though he has, a, let's say, a nurse that comes every once in a while. So he thought about his family, you know, and it really got to me. And uh, I definitely had some tears in my eyes when we were discussing more in depth of why he was selling. So. I said, not a problem. I explained to him the comps, what we think we can get for his home. And he wanted to show me all the little things in the home. It was immaculate. Even though the home was built in the early 90s, I mean, literally, it was so clean and well-maintained. Um, you know, it was like no one lived there. That's how clean it was. So you can tell they really loved their home. And he was showing me, like, you know, little things here and there, all the little details. And he said, Simon, I want to meet the buyer before we sign. And you have not done real estate. And I asked him why. He's like, well, I want my neighbors to make sure that they have a great neighbor that moves into my home. So right then and there, going back to caring for people, he cared about his family, cared about who would be living there for his neighbors. The man cared about everybody around him. And he had this like aura that uh, was very well loved and had this great energy that you just want to be around. So uh, we put the house on the market for sale and you know um, we had a great offer that came in at uh, full price um, and then when it came time to sign he was already at the retirement home so I went to go there so they can sign the contract and we explained everything to him and he was, he's sharp as a tack he can understand contracts like there's no tomorrow like anybody a fraction of his age like in their 20s in law school Alan can understand the contract just like them. So we went through the whole contract, he signed it, and then he's like, hey Simon, um, do you wanna see uh, what $5,000 a month gets you? 
And I'm like, sure. He's like, let me show you my room at the assisted living care. So he showed me, gave me the whole tour of the place and, and met all of his friends. And he, sh he, he, he brought me to his room. And uh, I was kind of surprised because the room, you know, it was very nice and clean, but he didn't take advantage of the lake view, which was kind of weird to me that it's on the lake, this assisted living care. So one thing I noticed immediately was all the photos that he has of his family on the table. And he was busy working, organizing them. And he's like, Simon, take a look at these. Um, and I was looking at them and they had photos from the 1940s, 50s, 60s, whole decades through the, the years. And they had pictures of him and his wife, you know, in beautiful clothing from the 1950s, sitting on like, you know, a fender of an old car, drinking a Coca-Cola, having a great time. And he's like, Simon, all we have in life are our memories. And that really got to me because in the end of someone's life, all they have are their memories. They have their memories they make with people. Nobody cares about, you know, how many hours you spend in the job or working overtime. The only people that actually remember that is your family. Think about that. Like your family remembers all the things that you've done at work, but your coworkers, they can care less. So what comes down to it is the memories. So share memories with the people you love the most. So we were discussing about how he moved to Miami and he was raised during the Great Depression in the 1920s. And uh, you know, he just lived this amazing life and from humble beginnings. And uh, I asked him, I said, Alan, I said, uh, so how long have you been here? He's like, well, I've been here for like a month, Simon. I thought I was gonna die in a few weeks. So you know, I was getting the month to month plan. And now I'm here three months later. So he has this sense of humor that was just infectious. And uh, so once we got the house on the contract, went through inspections and everything, and then we got to the closing, and we we're at this law office and we're doing the closing, and he still has his wedding ring on. And I asked him, I said, so Alan, I said, um, how many years were you married from across the table? And in a split second, he looked up at me and he's like, 71 years, Simon. I've been married for 71 years, and my my wife Ruth passed away, you know, a year prior. So he listens, he understands, and he still wears his wedding ring that is in respect for his wife and his marriage and his commitment and his vows that he made for her. I mean, this man had the most amazing values that one can have, and I really learned so much from him in this short period of time. So I was really thinking about what should I get him for a closing gift? Because usually for my clients, I always do a closing gift and I always attend the closing. I haven't missed a closing yet. We'll take that back. When my son was born one time, I missed a closing, but that was the only time that I missed a closing. And I said, what can I give somebody that has literally everything in the world that I can possibly have? Time. Time is the most important commodity in your life. So I talked to Alan and his daughter and I said, um, hey, would you guys like to come to lunch? And we can go to Hillstones in Winter Park. We have a great lunch there. And he said, absolutely. I said, okay, I'll pick up Alan and then we'll go to Hillstones and have this amazing lunch. So I went to go pick up Alan for lunch and he completely forgets, right? So I'm looking for him everywhere in this assisted living care. And I'm searching for him and then um, he's taking the long walk around the lake. And then he comes back and he's like, Simon, Simon, I'm so sorry, I forgot that we had the lunch today. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I keep apologizing. I said, Alan, I said, don't worry about it, it's fine. You know, just hop in my car and we'll go have some lunch and don't worry about it. Stop, stop saying you're sorry, it's, not, it's really not a big deal. So we hopped in my car and we went to lunch at Hillstones and uh, he's like, I really eat healthy. And I'm like, well, you know, let's have the closing, you know, we close on the home, let's celebrate. You know, let's go all out, Alan. So I ordered like, uh, you know, the, the chips and the artichoke dip, um, some great appetizers, deviled eggs. And then Alan's like, what's this? I said, oh, that's a French dip sandwich. You're gonna love it with au jus sauce. I said, I'll take that. So I had like a burger and steak and all this stuff. And we're all having this great lunch. And then uh, I said, wait, I'm for dessert, Alan. He's like, no, no, I can't have dessert. It's too, it's too sweet for me. I'm like, well, I'm gonna order dessert. He's like, okay, fine, you order dessert. I said, fine, perfect. So I ordered like this big chocolate sundae and had a key lime pie and I think something else like the chocolate cake and Alan's like you know we're digging in and we're like wolfing down all these desserts and usually I'm the one that gets the sundae at the end because they had the hot fudge on the bottom 
but Alan asked me, he's like, hey Simon, do you mind if I get the hot fudge on the bottom? And I'm like, sure Alan, go for it, it's all you. So he's like scooping it up and eating it, having this great time. And, uh, and it was great, it was a great celebration, but it was kind of bittersweet because I was saying, man, I'm like, I was involved in this man's life like literally every day from you know, start to finish from the listing of the house to selling it. And now I don't see him that often, so it's kind of a bummer. Um, but when I drove him back to the assisted living care, uh, and as he was getting out of the car, I said, Alan, I said, I have a question to ask you. He's like, what's that, Simon? I said, um, what brings you happiness in life? And uh, Alan looked up at me, and I'll never forget this. He said, you know, Simon, what brings me happiness in life is knowing my daughters love each other. And that has just been engraved, burned in my brain that through it all, through being raised in the Great Depression, getting out of poverty, going to school in Miami, working, installing windows, uh, living in a trailer, to becoming a successful engineer with, with Martin Marietta for 33 years and having all these accomplishments, he's most proud of his family. He's most proud of his daughters, that they love each other. You know, that this there was a great takeaway for me that I try to kind of implement in my life because you meet these wonderful people that have these great stories to tell and you know just learn from them you know it's a lot of times if someone's older we don't want to hear them but they have so much knowledge throughout life you know and uh, you think that 94 years is a long time but when you're actually 94 it's not really that far away I mean in a blink of an eye you know, I hope that we're all blessed to be in our 90s and live healthy lifestyles. But, you know, uh, unfortunately, Alan, he passed um, in November. And when his daughter called me, I was with my family when she called. And when she told me the news, like tears just came down my face. Because even though I've only known this man for a short period of time, he has really influenced my life. That's why I wanted to pay respect and homage to him and kind of tell a little bit of his story to uh, all my family and friends out there. And I really hope that kind of resonates with you and you kind of implement a little pick things from the video and put it into your life because what counts the most is your family. I have a, a good friend of mine uh, named Josh Wallach that uh, he's, uh, you know, runs Mangoes on International Drive. And I read one of his books. And in his book, it said, you know, you can achieve wealth, success, you can attain all that stuff you know, whatever, all materials, but it means absolutely nothing if you can't go home to a home where people love you and you love them back. So I really hope 2024 brings you guys good health, prosperity, love, great memories with people that you love and they love you. Um, make sure you subscribe to my channel, uh, like, comment, and hit that notification button. Every home has a story. Let us to yours. And thank you so much for listening to this video. And I hope it brings happiness in your life. Until then, let's go.